Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless his name. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We honor you, King Jesus. We bless your name, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way. Have your way, God. Have your way. Thank you, Lord God, for your presence dwelling in our midst today, oh God. You are awesome. You are mighty. You are sovereign. You are holy. You are the good shepherd, the bishop of our souls, and we bless you, God, for who you are. You are the rock upon which we stand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, you know, today is a great day. The Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. The Lord has blessed me to see another birthday today. I'm so excited because I turned 56 and still going strong in the Lord. God is so good. His mercy endures forever. It doesn't matter what's going on in our lives. God keeps on doing great things for me. Every day is a blessing just to be able to get up and still have the activity of your limbs, still functional. You know, God is so good. He allowed the death angel to pass us by while we rested on last night. He woke us up this morning, right on time, didn't let us sleep too late. That's a great God we serve. And the Bible tells us in Psalm 34, 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. That is great news to know that God's praises is still on our mouths every day when we wake up. He woke us up right on time that we can give him the glory, the honor, and the praise. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Hallelujah. Good to see you, cuz. God bless you. Good to see you, Webster. Praise the Lord. It, it is definitely a, a reason to praise God because of his goodness and his mercy continues to endure forever. Doesn't matter what things look like, what's going on in your life. God keeps on doing great things for us. You know, we can praise him. Good evening, Desiree. God bless you. We can keep on praising him because he's good. You know, it doesn't matter how we feel sometimes. It's not based on our feelings. It's not based on our emotions. It's not based on anything we have done good or bad. It's all based on the mercy of God because he loved us unconditionally. And the love of God does not cease. The Bible tells us that God says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. And by my loving kindness have I drawn you to myself. And that is excellent news to know that God drew us to himself when we are yet in a place of despair, a place of darkness, a place of hopelessness. Yet God, hallelujah, he saw fit to call you and me his children out of darkness into his marvelous light. Therefore, we can rejoice in the Lord our God and be exceedingly glad because great is our reward in heaven. Amen. I just had to get that out. Had to get that out because I'm, I'm so excited. I am so excited because many people lost their lives during this pandemic. People my age, even younger, has passed away because of the pandemic. But God let us be here one more time to be a living testimony of how good he is to us when we trust and depend on his word. Amen. Amen. So let's open up in prayer. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for another opportunity of God to share your word tonight. I pray, Lord, that you speak to our hearts by divine revelation. Father God, from the Logos, that we get a rhema word from the Father, from the oracles of God's heart, that you speak, Father God, 
to give us that word to help change our destiny, change our future, restore our hope, restore, restore our strength in times of weaknesses, that we're able to stand firm in the faith of Jesus Christ because of God, what you have done for us. It's not predicated on our behavior, will be good or bad. It's about what you have done, God, to extend your love for, towards us while we are yet sinners. Christ died for us that we can have new life. And today, God, we're celebrating the new life that's found in knowing you, God, because of your goodness and your mercy. Father, speak tonight by your spirit of God. Help us to grow in grace and the knowledge of who you are, that we receive a word of God that will help us, Father God, to become stronger and stronger in our walk with you and our dependency upon God, that no matter what comes our way, when the enemy comes in like a flood, we have the confidence and a blessed hope assurance knowing that you will raise a standard against him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, you, you know, when we think of the goodness of Jesus, how God could have abandoned us and left us in our mess, but yet he saw fit to give us a second and another chance. People always say a second. You know, God is a God of another chance. If it was just a second chance, we would have died by now. But because he's a God of another chance, he keeps on giving us chance after chance to get our lives right with him as we learn how to surrender to his leadership, his lordship, and his authority. What a great God we serve. So last week, we started a teaching on the, uh, the uh, spirit of seducing, seducing spirits, seducing spirits. I don't know why my tongue got twisted up. But we started talking about seducing spirits. And the word seduce is a word that means to entice someone into sexual activity, to uh, attract someone to a different belief system, to cause their hearts to be fooled, you know, from following truth and following after error or a lie. But God wants us to know tonight that we don't have to give in to those spirits because the devil is a liar and Jesus Christ is Lord. Our key scripture is in James chapter 1. James chapter 1, well, actually 1 Timothy chapter uh, 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4, and it's, it starts at verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4, then we're going to go to James chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. So 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressively that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. That's a shame. You know what God is talking about? How the seducing spirits, they're going to have so, so much control over your thinking in your thought life to where it becomes seared like a hot iron when you melt something together you become seared with the demonic doctrine that's not of god to keep you from falling out the truth because he said in the latter times he talking about the end times this very day we're living in the last days where men and women are turning from the truth of god's word and they're falling after a lie and god wants us to know that we need to be aware of these things that are taking place in, in our mindset to turn us from our faith and trusting in God. I don't know about you, but there are many false teachers out there. There are many ministries out there that's not really following truth. Jehovah Witness, they follow half truth. You have Buddhism. You have, you know, all kinds of religions that are out here in this world with the purpose of, to turn you from your belief in God, the Muslim faith. You know, they, they, they have even finally got the revelation with Farrakhan now teaching about Jesus Christ. I heard the other day a message he was talking about how a person must be born again. And that's something they never used to talk about. But because Christ is being revealed into a high capacity, he's turning even the Muslim faith to begin to follow the true gospel of Jesus Christ. That's excellent news. 
So you got to have a stern conviction in your own heart where your faith lies in God. Second Timothy chapter two, verse 22, it says, now flee from youthful lust and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. You have to have a strong conviction in your heart that you're not going to let nothing else turn you from your faith in God and your belief, your love, your hope, your, your dependency upon God, your commitment to God, your relationship with God. He said, flee youthful lust and pursue righteousness. Why? Because the lust of the flesh. Go to James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. James chapter 1, verse 14 and 15, in the New Living Translation, it says, Temptation comes from our own desire, which entices us and drags us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. In the King James, it says it like this, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin and sin, when it is finished, it bringeth forth death. It's a shame how the enemy use your own desire against you. You hear what I just said? The enemy doesn't prevent, present anything to you that you are not familiar with. He presents to you the thing that your heart gratifies, the thing your heart is drawn to, the things your heart is enticed with, is what he's going to bring to you to tempt you. The Bible says God never tempts us to do wrong, neither does he tempt anyone else. So if God doesn't tempt, that's in verse 13, if God doesn't tempt you to do wrong, then who is doing the tempting? Temptation is something that's of your own desire that's dragging you away from God's truth and righteousness to following your sinful desires to fulfill your flesh hunger. Our flesh hungers after the things of the world. Our flesh hungers to turn from truth and not follow after God. But God wants us to know today that you have the power to overcome Anything the enemy brings your way by surrendering to his lordship and his authority. The devil is a liar when he tells you that God knows your heart, that it's okay to fornicate, it's okay to adulterate, it's okay to become an alcoholic, it's okay to become a drug addict, it's okay to do the things that make your flesh feel good and turns you from God. That's a lie from the devil. And the devil is going to have his, his time in the lake of fire in the end. And those who follow after him, the Bible tells us, will fall into that pathway of departed souls in the pit of hell. But you can change that today. Because you have to make up in your mind that, you know what? No matter what the devil tempts me with, I'm going to follow after God. Because he's the one that paid the price for me through his own son, giving him as a sacrifice. He's the only one that brought me true salvation. Now, because of this truth, I'm going to follow after God wholeheartedly. We cannot straddle the fence. So many of us Christians, we think it's okay to be lukewarm. That's straddling the fence. Where I'm in today and out today. I'm in, I'm, I'm serving God with my heart, my mind, my soul, my will, my emotions, everything about me is serving God. But then all of a sudden something happens on the same day. All of a sudden you back doing the same things that God delivered you from. So we got to recognize this spirit when it comes to seduce you. And that's what seducing spirit does. It feeds you the things that you desire the most. To cause you to fall into to sin and rebellion and resentment from God. So the strong man 
are especially active in the last days of our age as evil becomes irresistible. You hear what I just said? Evil becomes irresistible. So it's okay to give into evil imagination and the sinful desires of your flesh. Why? Because that's what the enemy wants you to do to turn you from God. So we talked about last week, the prime target is people who have accepted Christ as their savior. You are the target. Just like playing darts. You have a dart board. And you take these darts and you try your best to get the highest points by hitting the center target of that dart board. The enemy knows that if I can bullseye you with the target on the target of the dart board, I can assassinate your purpose. I can assassinate your vision. I can abort your dreams. I can stop you from walking in God's plan for your life. I can lead you down a pathway of destruction. And that's what he does on a daily basis. He works so hard to turn you from your faith in God. But God wants us to know tonight that, hey, we're stronger than that. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. I was looking at the devotion today. And it says from the book of more of you, God. It says, Heavenly Father. You are my hiding place. Today I get down on my knees, praying like never before. I need you, Lord. Trouble is coming my way. I know as long as you as long as I have you in the equation, it will not reach me. That is so good. As long as we have God in the equation, no matter what the devil brings your way, it will not reach you. You can return to sender when he come knocking at your spiritual door, which is your heart, to cause you to fall. You can tell him, I'm not taking it today. Then it goes on to today, it, says, it goes on and says, you, Lord, are my safety net. Father, you protect the weak from those who appear to be strong and powerful. Now I thank you, Lord, for your salvation. You hide me in your presence. I trust you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord, for you, for who you are. I love you, Lord, for who you are. I love this place, getting and resting in more of you, God. That is a most powerful devotional for those who are being attacked, those who feel weak in their faith, those who feel like they lost their salvation, they feel that they don't have no strength or no power to stand against temptation, trials, and tests, but God is your anchor. He is your hope against hope. He is your strength and weaknesses. His presence hides you in the shadow of the Almighty from every attack and assault the enemy brings your way. But you got to get in God's word to know it. The more you get into God's word, the more God's word validates who you are in Christ Jesus. You got to get to the place where you recognize that no matter what the enemy brings against me, I'm going to do as Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So you got to recognize my help comes from the Lord. Psalms 121 and 1 says, I will look to the hills from whence comes my help. For my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. So if God is your help, guess what? He's your strength. When you don't have the strength to stand, you don't have the strength to fight. God guarantees that I will be your strength to give you the ability to overcome the seducing spirits. The enemy brings your direction. He'll send the person who you have walked away from that kept you in trouble, that kept you bound in different types of sinful activities. He'll remove those people from you. God will. But the devil will bring them right back at the time he knows you're vulnerable. Isn't that something? The devil knows what it is that's going to lure and entrap you and entice you and bait you to fall back into the category of sin. So many people are enticed with false religions. 
and it usually is connected to a false doctrine because a false doctrine follows a false religion because that's what they're standing on to lure many people from their true conviction of salvation and their belief in God to stop you from having faith in God. We talked about the invasion, how the enemy wants to invade God's people in the church. He come into the church and he does what he can to knock you off balance, to destroy you. But every time, we, then we talked about the weaknesses that open doors. The enemy knows when you have a weakness in your flesh, what area it is to attack the most. And when he finds that foothold in your life, that breach, he will come in to a believer's heart that's unrepented. And he will stop you from recognizing your mistakes your shortcomings, your failures. He'll blind you from the truth. The Bible tells us like this. If the gospel be hid, it's hid to those whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them. The enemy knows how to blind you. He knows how to stop you in your track. Just like when God told Lot, when he came to Sodom and Gomorrah, he sent an angel to deliver his people but yet so many people were caught up in fornication, adultery, and homosexuality, and lesbianism, all these different things. That's why it was called Sodom and Gomorrah, because it was a wicked city. And God was so angry with that city, he decided to destroy the whole city. And he told Lot, come out, you and your family, and do not look back. But what happened? Because of the heart of his wife was so attractive to the sinful activities in Sodom and Gomorrah, she turned and looked back. And the Bible says she became a pillar of salt, which is a memorial to this very day to remind us how we do not need to look back to the thing God delivered you from and stay there. It's okay to have a memory to reflect back to the thing God brought you out of and remember how he delivered you and praise him for the deliverance. But the problem comes in when we ponder in our minds the sinful activities, the things we engaged in our life along the pathway of our journey, and it held us in bondage and imprisoned us in our minds away from truth and righteousness. And God says we got to get to the place where we recognize that you cannot stay in the place of bondage. You gotta reflect back and give God the praise. Cause he said, he said, God said your word, forget those things with behind and, and press forward towards the mark for the pride of how you call him a God in Christ Jesus. So we gotta look forward, we gotta press forward with a conviction of heart, knowing who I am and whose I am. Otherwise, that seducing spirit will come through any type of avenue, the television, the radio, family members, friends, neighbors. It will come through anybody that you know that is not serving God. And it will try to entice you and lure you and drag you back into the sinful activities that will cause you to fall into a place of captivity and bondage and destruction. If he has left an open door, anyone leaves an open door, Satan, he, he takes that as an opportunity or an invitation to come into your life to tempt you, to fall away from grace. So we got to recognize that the enemy is a liar, God is exalted, and Jesus Christ is Lord. We got to know with the truth for ourselves that we don't have to be in a place of captivity anymore because he who the son has set free is free indeed. We got to recognize the devil is a liar and he is not to be trusted. He's not to be relied on. You can't depend on him because he will deceive you. He will manipulate you. He will cause you to fall. 
we talked about neutralization. The enemy, what he does, once he gets a foothold in your life, a breach in your wall of your heart, he comes in to neutralize you. And to be neutralized is when the enemy comes in to harass you and oppress you by sin, accompanied by demonic activity, to cause you to become very inactive for the kingdom of God. That's what the enemy does. He wants you to become inactive where he can stop you in your track and prevent you from walking in truth and righteousness. If you don't recognize what spirit it is, I was talking to a, a, a pastor friend of mine earlier today and the Lord reminded me that we have to recognize the spirit that's behind the spirit. And what I mean by that, many illnesses that come upon people's lives are because of something we might have opened up with our, our mouth or our ear gate and we didn't cast it down. People can come into your ear gate and tell you you look sick today. They can tell you you don't look well. They can tell you that you, you look like something wrong with you. You, you look angry today. You look miserable. And you don't cast down that spirit where they just spoke to you. That spirit began to play on your psyche. It play in your mind. And when it plays on your mind, guess what happens? It begins to activate on the inside of your heart because what goes in the mind goes to the heart, comes out the mouth. Jesus says it's not what goes into a man that defiles him, but what comes out of that man that defiles him. So the enemy puts a thought in your mind from what somebody spoke over you or you saw on television or you heard on the radio or you heard from another individual and you didn't cast it down. So the spirit behind that individual, which is the enemy himself, activates that activity of sin to cause you to be afflicted. And then it imprisons you. And now all of a sudden, now you're miserable. You're angry when you were just full of joy and excitement and life and vitality. All of a sudden, now you're miserable. You're broken down. You don't feel like you got no strength to fight. All of a sudden, your body's getting sick. You're feeling feverish. Why? Because you confessed it. Jesus says, whatever you confess with your mouth, you will have it. Read Mark 11 chapter, verse 22 to 26. He said, you can speak to the mountains and command the mountain to be cast into the midst of the sea. He said, and do not down your heart, it shall come to pass. You have the choice to receive negative words from other people or even from yourself. Or you can cast down every imagination and every high thought that is all itself against the knowledge of God bringing those thoughts into captivity to the obedience of Christ. You have a choice. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Let me go here. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5. It says, Casting down imaginations and every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So what he's talking about, the power of your mouth. You have the right to cast down every imagination and every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing those thoughts into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So in the NIV, it says it like this. It says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ and we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete 
I love the way that's defined there because it lets you know you have the power because verse 4 says the weapons we fight are not the weapons of the world on the contrary they have divine power to demolish strongholds anything that's being demolished is being destroyed you have the power in your mouth through the word of God to destroy arguments so if anyone come to you on the contrary trying to argue and, and debate about the word of God you have the right to cast it down because anything that's being demolished is being ripped to shreds being destroyed dynamite is, is just, just tearing it to pieces and that's what God says. We have dynamite power on the inside of us. So we got to take that power, which is the word of God, to fight against the strongholds of the enemy. So we can't allow the enemy to neutralize us by sickness, economic problems, unsaved relatives, fear, heaviness, spiritual pride, arrogancy, haughtiness, bitterness, anger, malice, jealousy, hatred. We cannot allow the enemy to victimize us by those spirits of those activities anymore. Why? Because we're casting them down from our mentality because we're speaking as Joshua 1 and 8. We're speaking the word of God to ourselves as we meditate on the word of God day and night to keep it in our hearts. That's what the word says. Keep it in the midst of your heart. And he says, and when you keep it in your heart, he said the word of God will make you prosperous and you'll have good success everywhere you go. A lot of problems comes when we don't cast down those spirits. So the enemy uses those tools against you to mess up your finances, to put you in debt, to cause you to lose your home, cause you to lose your job, to revert back to drugs and alcohol. It, it takes you back to the things that he knows that's the most destructive mechanism in your life to destroy everything God has given you. You got to recognize it. I can't do it for you, but you can do it. But the Holy Spirit, as a man of God, I walk in prophetic anointing, God will reveal to me sometimes what a person's root problem is in their life when they come to the altar. Many times we go to the altar call, but we're not being fully sincere with the things in our heart. And God says it like this. When the Holy Spirit begins to come, he says he's going to guide the world in all truth. And bring back to your memory the thing which I command you. So when the Holy Spirit begins to speak, not only will he bring you to truth, but he will reveal the hidden untruth in your heart. The Holy Spirit will reveal your hidden agenda. Those secret sins in your life, the things that's holding you in a place of bondage, that's, that's leading you to hell. He will reveal to the prophet, to the man of God, the woman of God, what it is that's in your life that's destroying you. And a lot of problems in our lives can be fixed by a confession. By us admitting I have an issue, admitting I have a problem, admitting I got a stronghold, admitting I've been walking in lies and deceit, I've been trick, tricking folk, I've been manipulating folk, I've been a liar, I've been a, a, all kind of stuff that you know we do as human beings. God said the Holy Spirit will reveal to you exactly what the root cause of your issue is the next subject is unsaved relatives we've already covered fear and infirmity in the other chapters so let's look at the last excuse unsaved relatives in a large number of cases where the husband or wife is, is not saved it can it can many times be traced to some problem in the Christian partner's life there are some Christian women who prefer that the husband remain unsaved so they will, so they will have a ready-made excuse for any failure in their lives or in their Christian walk. The whole situation blows up in their faces. However, when the unsaved partner, by some miracle, does get saved, sometimes they spend the rest of their lives being a thorn and now saved partner side. Now a saved partner at their side. So God knows 
when we're manipulating our spouses or our mates in our lives or our significant other, he knows when we're using our Christian as a leverage over them. Our Christianity is a leverage over them to keep them unsaved. God knows the heart of man. He knows when we're wicked. He knows when we're being deceptive. But then God knows the good thing about God. He said there's nothing new under the sun. God knows everything about us. And he makes it visible and he clear, make it clear to us that even your unsaved mate, he knows the time of those who are really going to become sincere in their heart and turn their lives over to the Lord and be born again. But then he knows those mates in your lives who don't even have an agenda in their hearts to turn to the Lord and be saved. So God knows that their destiny is hell bound. But you have to be real with yourself and examine your heart to know if you are a hindrance in somebody else's life, your significant other, your friend, your neighbor, it doesn't matter who it is. You can be a hinder too. God wants you to examine your heart to see whether you are walking in truth and righteousness in the faith or you being stubborn, resentful, and prideful, and arrogant, and manipulating folk. So God knows where your heart is. The carnal Christian. Most carnally minded or neutralized Christians remain in an era of spiritual neutralization where they are either happy in or out of church. Pity to the poor pastor who attempts to shepherd such a church member for it is nearly impossible for them to get saved. The carnal Christian will usually get his feelings hurt by something or someone and quit the church in a huff. Here, here's the point where many depart from the faith. They are set up for the kill, living carnally, angry at the pastor or a fellow church member, but still have a desire to attend church. That's a shame. That is a, a crime shame that a Christian who's carnal, and carnal is another word for fleshly. It's like you have hardly walking for the Lord. You have hardly serving God. You have hardly given your life to Jesus. So you feel like I can be fleshly, serve God on my condition and my terms, and still go to heaven. The devil is a lie. Because if you're carnally minded, in Galatians chapter 5, it tells us you become an enemy of God. But the heart that's walking in the spirit, that mind of the spirit, he says, is life and peace. But a person who's living calmly looks for any type of excuse for a reason to stop going to church. Oh, it's okay to stay home and watch TV. I can see church on TV. I ain't got to go be, be with them saints. I ain't got to go listen to that choir music. I don't have to do this or do that. Why? I can get the same thing at home. You know what? You're right. You can stay home and watch TV. You sure can. You stay home and watch Christian church. You can. But the problem comes in is your spiritual growth is, is, is vulnerable. It's being hurt. It's being assassinated. It's being aborted because you're not growing in your house by yourself. The reason God, he said, in the body of Christ, there are many members, but yet they're one body. Because he said, iron sharpens iron as one of another to a friend. Because he knows that relationship with other believers is what helps strengthen you and encourage you to walk stronger in your relationship with the Lord and to overcome the struggles and the habits and addictions that somebody else already defeated. And they can show you how you can overcome the same thing by walking in relationship with other believers. But then you got the carly minded ones in the church who look for reason to be argumental with other Christian folk. Look for reasons to stop going to church because I'm mad at the pastor. I'm mad at a church member. I'm mad at what, how they're not teaching the way I want them to teach. I'm mad because they're not serving God the way I was raised to serve God. Everybody's personal conviction is going to be different from yours. Your relationship is going to be different between other people than you with Christ. But the thing is, as long as your life is lining up with God's word, that is the most important thing in your heart. 
is to know that I'm in right standing. I see it all the time. Right standing and right relationship with God on my way to heaven. Sharing the good news with somebody else who lost their, their way and don't know Jesus. And I can help even bring a backslider back because of my conviction. My life is lining with God's word. And every day I'm practicing to walk in righteousness and true holiness. For God said, without holiness, no man can see the Lord. The seducing spirit swoops in with modern, upbeat, att attractive religion. And Mr. and Mrs. Neutralized Christians are swept right into it before they can blink their eye. We have the power. Let me go back to it. This is, this is really good. It said, for they blink their eye. And then it says, false signs and wonders. Other Christians are attracted by false prophets and working of false signs and wonders. False Christ and false prophets shall rise and, and show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the very elect. Mark chapter 13, verse 22. Mark chapter 13, verse 22. It says, even the very elect would be deceived from following the truth of God's word because of false prophets and false religions and false Christ. The Antichrist is going to rise up with power and authority and he's going to fool the very elect into believing that it's okay to live half-heartedly for the Lord and still die and go to heaven. But that's a lie from the enemy. It's a deception. It's trickery. And God wants our eyes to be open and to be flooded with light. He wants us to get to the place where we know the word of God for ourselves and follow after truth. Because it's the truth that's going to set you free. It's a lie that's going to deceive you. And the enemy knows that if you follow after a lie, that it's going to keep you in a place of entrapment to falling into bondage and eventually destroy your very existence. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5, it says, Even when we were dead in sin, has, has he quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. We were quickened. We were destined. We were bought for such a time as this to be living epistles of the gospel of Jesus Christ to show the world of a Savior who gave his life for us that we can live a life that's sold out for Jesus. But you got to make up your mind that in yourself that you're going to follow after the Lord without hesitation and without giving in to the enmity of the flesh, the things that causes you to sin against God. We got to get to the place where we recognize the word of God with power and authority and walk by faith and not by sight. Because if we don't walk by faith, we're going to walk by sight, but walk by the flesh, and the flesh is going to deceive you into walking in a place of rebellion against God. So we got to get to the place where we know God's word for ourselves. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18, well, actually verse 17 and 18 says, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So what Paul was talking to the church in Ephesus, he said, God wants you to have wisdom and a revelation from the heart of God through his word by understanding who he is and the life he led before us as an example that our eyes will be open to understand the power of God that's working in our lives and the glorious inheritance that's in the saints. That glorious inheritance was that salvation that God gave us through his own son. So when you recognize we receive grace upon grace that when I do fall, I have an advocate who forever make intercession for me to keep me on the right track. Even when I feel like I'm not good enough, I don't measure up to God's standards. 
God says, I paid the price even in that area. That you can be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Since when we follow signs and wonders instead of God's word, we will have more trouble than we can handle. And the average Christian today is neglecting the reading and the hearing of the word of God for a hundred different reasons. That makes them a prime candidate for seducing spirits to exploit them. Without God's word to guide them, they are hopelessly astray. So you got to get in the word of God and get the word of God inside of you so you can learn about the life that we are to live for the Lord. So you can learn about your identity, your nature, because we've been adopted in the family of God because of what Christ has done. God says we're heirs and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. And because we're heirs and joint heirs, guess what? We receive the glorious inheritance of the saints that's in God. Because God loved us enough to say, you know what? Everything you need, when you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, so all these things shall be added unto you, because I paid the price for you. Speaking of false prophets who will operate during the great tribulation, we're told that he does great wonders so that he makes fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had the power to do in the sight of the beast. Revelations chapter 13, 13 and 14 talks about the Antichrist. He's going to perform many wonders in the sight of man to where it's going to be the power that comes from the enemy that's against God working in your life. And it talks about how the, even the very elect, God's children, his chosen vessels, if they don't stay in the word of God and keep walking in truth and righteousness, they will be the very ones that will be led astray by the Antichrist. We are seeing the buildup of the time in the world history. Only those who live carefully according to God's word will be able to sense the true direction they should choose. That is so true and that is so amazing that only the true believers who are following after God through Jesus Christ will be erected by the Holy Spirit and know which way they should go. Because the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth and direct you in the truth and the pathway God has set before you. Many seducing spirits come through music. It comes from various types of activities, cultisms, adultery, filthiness, drugs, homosexuality, anti-God, all these different things. Many other things the Bible talks about are the attributes of a seducing spirit that will lead you into Satan's cesspool of unbelief and disobedience to where it brings you to the pit of despair to destroy your life. We cannot play in the garbage and end up, smelling like, and end up not smelling like trash. If you climb into a dumpster looking for something you may have dropped in there accidentally, what happens when you come out of that dumpster? The smell of the garbage gets on your clothes. So you got to go change your clothes, even take a shower again sometimes. Because the smell of garbage gets on you. That's the same way the enemy does. You play in garbage. The stint, the smell of garbage gets on you. And God told Jonah, if you're reading the book of Jonah, God said Nineveh was a, a wealthy city, but a wicked city. Sit, a wick, wicked city. He said their sin has came up to him as a stinking odor in his nostrils. And God decided he was going to destroy the whole city. But he changed his mind. He relented of his d d judgment, his judgment towards Nineveh. And said, you know what? I'm going to send my prophet to go and speak to Nineveh and proclaim the gospel, the word of God, that the city can be saved. That's how merciful God is. 
God won't relent his love towards you. He won't relent of his love towards you. If God makes his decision to save your soul from the pit of hell, he's not going to change his mind every time you make a mistake and fall short of God's glory. So you know what? They done messed up too many times. I'm going to leave them alone. Let them go and die and go to hell. No, he's not going to do that. What he's going to do, he's going to forgive you. He's going to turn his heart towards you and be merciful. And he's going to redeem you. Because the price has already been paid for you. So then we get to the point of deception. Deception is the name of the game in these last days. We know people that like dead in the church. We know people that we associate with. We know they always deceiving. They're very manipulative. They're very cunning. They always using tricks against you to get your money or something else to get you to do that you know you normally don't do. That's how the enemy does. Paul warns Timothy. He said, in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, and false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those things that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. He said, from such turn away. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse. And he said, wax worse. And he said, and deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them and from that as a child has known them from the holy scriptures he says which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith in christ jesus so the things you learn he's telling timothy the things you learn from a childhood about the holy scriptures don't let no one turn you from it the things you learn my brother and sister about god's word don't allow anybody to turn you from the truth and to follow after a lie to deter you from your belief, your faith in God. Stand on God's word. Believe in God's word. Keep holding on to God's word. Because the key to holding on to everything God has promised you is your faith. The key to keeping faith in these dangerous times is God's word. You got to get in the word. For the scripture says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination, every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity the, every thought of disobedience of Christ to Christ. Then it says, when we discipline our minds to think according to the way God thinks, it shuts and locks the door of our minds to Satan's temptation. The things you learned of God's word, if you walk by faith and not by sight, holding on to truth and righteousness in God's word, God says it shuts and it locks the door in your mind to save temptation. It seals the breaches. The breaches that you may open up because of unbelief or the breaches you open up in your life because of sin. God says when you return to him, and begin to love the Lord through a repentant heart. God says you shut the door to Satan's activities and temptations in your mind that will try to lure you back into the entrapment of the things you've been delivered from. It is a fact that our minds are capable of thinking only one thought at a time. If Satan tries to interject his thoughts or temptation, it is then necessary to forcefully Reject those thoughts and begin to think on the things of God. The word of God directs us to think on the holy, the just, the good report, the things of virtue, and the things that are praiseworthy. We dare not let our minds drift into just any thought they happen to like or desire. 
So as God's word is reminding us tonight in our hearts that the more we think on the things that are lovely, just, good report, the things that are virtuous, the things that are praiseworthy, when we think on these things which gratifies God's word, he says, we dare not, we better not allow our minds to drift back into thoughts that contradict and opposes God's word. So I want you to pray this prayer with me tonight. Dear Father, forgive me for allowing the world to creep into my heart and life. I can see how deceptive the enemy is, and I know only your word can guide me through spiritual minefields that lie ahead. I promise to read your word each day and to seek your guidance for my life. Satan, in the name of Jesus, I bind your seducing spirits, according to Matthew 18, 18, which says, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. I realize you are trying to cause me to depart from the faith. So I command you to leave me alone from this moment on. I choose to follow Jesus. And that leaves you out of the equation, out of my life, Satan, in Jesus' name. Now go in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for freeing me now from the evil spirit of seduction that were trying to deceive me. I loose your Holy Spirit in my life, according to Matthew 18, 18, which tells me, whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And I thank you for forgiving me and giving me the victory over the every power of the enemy. And I appropriate the mind of Christ to be my mind, according to your promises. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pray that you believe that, receive that, stand on that, because we just broke by the power of God's word through prayer. The power of a seducing spirit off of our minds. But you got to receive it. You got to believe it. You got to trust that it's done by faith in God's word. So next week we're going to enter into the spirit of the Antichrist. The spirit of the Antichrist. We're supposed to start today, but I felt compelled by the spirit of God to go back over the spirit of, sedu of, of the seducing spirits or the spirit of seduction. So we have to get to the place where we stand on God's word every day and cover our minds with the blood of Jesus. So when you get up in the mornings, pray over your mind, pray over your heart and cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Anoint your head with oil and believe that the oil is God's presence that's covering and shielding you when you leave out of your house to protect you from the attacks of the enemy. So if you are on tonight, and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or you might be a backslider, I want you to pray this prayer with me tonight. And I want you to believe this, that God is able to restore you. He's married to the backslider. He loves a sinner who turned his life over to Jesus. You might be bound in some type of sin. It doesn't matter. He loves you just the same. So I want you to pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. And that I have sinned against you. Forgive me, God, for my rebellious ways, for my backsliding ways, my sinful ways, and come into my heart and cleanse me by the blood of the Lamb. And I thank you for forgiving me. Now come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior and restore me to right standing and right relationship with you through your Son Jesus. And now, Lord, release the power of the Holy Spirit to cover me. My mind, my body, my soul, my will, my emotions with your presence that I can be a witness for you for the rest of my life. In Jesus name. Amen. You prayed that prayer tonight. Allow the spirit of God to minister to your heart. And I guarantee that God will. He will bring you to the place of victory. From the days 
of your life as you walk by faith and not by sight. So I would also want to thank everyone for attending tonight. If you feel in your heart to sow a seed into this ministry, it goes right back into the church. Every seed that anyone sows, I put it right back into the church because that's what God instructed me for the upbuilding of the kingdom of God. But if you are, are one who, who's believing God to sow a seed, I'm going to post on here as soon as this thing decides to work right. Okay, I just post the link of sowing a seed into the ministry. If you feel compelled by the Spirit of God to sow a seed, doesn't matter what amount it is. It can be $5, $10, $20, whatever it is that God put in your heart to sow. That seed is for the upbuilding of God's kingdom. Not only that, but by faith, it's for releasing the harvest into your life that God has for you. I'm a giver. I love giving to the kingdom of God. I help many people out as God instruct me to help because I believe in sowing seeds in people's lives as well. And when God touched my heart to do that, I do that. But I encourage you to sow a seed. The Bible said, if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. You sow bountifully, you shall reap bountifully. And God promises that when you give, it will come back to you good measures Pressed down, shaking together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. So I encourage you tonight to allow the Spirit of God to move upon your heart, to sow a seed, and believe God for a harvest in return. And I guarantee, I can bank my life on it. God will bless you tremendously in a way you don't expect it. But I'm a person, I expect God. Every time I sow a seed, doesn't matter what it is, it can be a dollar. I expect God to take that seed and bless me in return with a harvest of blessing. Because God promises that he will rain on us. As the rain comes down and the snow comes down and does not return to heaven, God says, so shall the word be that he speaks of our lives. It will prosper where God wanted to go in your life and in my life as we walk by faith and not by sight. So, Father, tonight we thank you for this lesson. I pray that something has been said that would encourage the people of God to keep standing strong in their faith and their conviction in serving you with their hearts, their minds, their souls, their will, their emotions. Father God, no matter what the enemy brings their way, temptation, trials, and tests is defeated because Jesus Christ has led us into triumph. He gave us the victory. And because we have the victory, we walk by faith and not by sight. And we thank you, Lord God, that we are more than a conqueror. Therefore, we will not be conquered. We're the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. We're the lenders and not the borrowers because we believe in your word, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that it is so. And I thank you, Lord God, that you continue to bless your people who heard this word tonight, Father God. This word will meditate in their hearts, bring back to the remembrance when they leave this recording tonight, Father God, and begin to hear this word again in their spirits, it will remind them that they are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Anyone have any questions or comments before we go that you'd like for me to answer? But I want to thank everybody for your support tonight. Because I, I really believe these lessons are changing somebody's life. I don't know about you, but it's changing my life. The more I hear this word, because God speaks to me first, and I teach this word, it's getting in my spirit. And it gets in my spirit. If I'm in an area in my life that's not right with God, it convicts me first. Before I teach you, God hits me first. And then it hits everybody else. But I believe that this word is going to continue to strengthen you and encourage you in your walk in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. If no one have any questions or comments, you can also inbox me. If you find a question you would like for me to answer later on, feel free to in inbox me. The scriptures I read tonight were posted earlier in the uh, recording uh, as people were commenting. Uh, LaShonda Cole has posted all the scriptures on here tonight. You can go back and look on the video 
under the comments and you'll see all the scriptures again right there. Okay, Desiree? Yeah, the, script, the scriptures are there. Amen. But I will, um, I will inbox you too if you need me to. But uh, you all have a, a blessed and a glorious night. And again, I want to thank everyone for your, your opportunity of tuning in tonight in our lesson. For truly, God is good. His mercy endures forever. So you be blessed on tonight. And I know everything that God has for you, he will fulfill according to his promises he has for your life. Until next week. Share this video, encourage somebody else who you know that may be weak in their faith, who may be struggling in their faith. Send this message to them, this teaching, and I guarantee it's going to bless them as well as it bless you. And I thank everyone for the birthday wishes on today as well. And, and I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful because God has blessed me with another opportunity to teach this lesson even on my birthday. And you all have a good night. Thank you.